Hello guys and welcome back. Today I want to talk to you about a boot which is really near and dear to my heart. It was it was part of the uniform when I was in high school and even into my 20s and until I started getting more into what boots are all about, um, it was kind of my default boot and I'm talking about the Doc Martens of course. These are... I mean, they're a boot in and of themselves, which I'd like to review a little bit later on in the video. If you want to skip ahead to that, I'll put a link somewhere. Uh, but I want to talk more about its history and about its social impact because so many different subcultures have, have embraced this boot and made it their own. So I don't think you could talk about Doc Martens without acknowledging that fact and its place, its legendary status. To tell the complete story of Doc Martens, we have to dive into history just a little bit. Before Doc Martens' time in the 50s, we have to go all the way back to 1901 with the Griggs family. The Griggs family were well-known bootmakers in their town of Wollaston, Northamptonshire, making very durable work boots. And they continued this tradition. It was in 1945 that Dr. Klaus Martens returned to Munich from World War II and had an injured foot or an ankle. The history is a little bit fuzzy on that. While he was recovering from this injury, he found traditional leather-soled shoes too uncomfortable, so he made his own air cushion sole from scrap rubber and an old shoe last. Partnering with his classmate and mechanical engineer, Dr. Herbert Funk, began production of the air cushion footwear in 1947. 80% of sales in the first decade were actually to women over the age of 40 who appreciated the comfortable soles, and they were even marketed as a garden shoe for a time. Now the Griggs family that I mentioned earlier, they acquired the license to produce these Dr. Martin's work boots with the air cushion sole, and they did alter the design somewhat. They introduced the telltale yellow stitching, introduced the sole as airwear as we know it now, and they altered the name to Dr. Martin's from Dr. Meritons. They brought the legendary 1468 hold boot to the UK on April 1st, 1960 with the aptly named 1460, originally in smooth oxblood, but some say cherry red leather. Besides Griggs, there were other manufacturers producing licensed Dr. Martin's footwear like NPS, which we now know as Solo Vare. The boots were very popular among working folk and they were standard issue to the UK police during the 1970s. Others adopted the Dr. Martens as well and they were especially popular in subcultures like skinheads, goth, punk, and other counter cultures. And I really think that it's this association with different subcultures which is really the heart of people's love for Docs. Doc Martens' popularity peaked in the 1990s when they were producing over 10 million pairs each year. Unfortunately, they saw a steep decline in the 2000s, and in 2003, they considered bankruptcy. They cut 1,000 jobs in the UK and relocated most production to Thailand and China, an unpopular decision among those who saw Docs as a British icon. However, Docs have seen a rise in popularity lately, and now you have the option to buy a bunch of different types of Doc Martens. You have the Chinese or Taiwanese models for around $140. You have the Made in England models, which are manufactured in the original Griggs factory, which account for only about 1% of their production. Now, it is important to note that in 2013, Doc Martens, or more specifically, R. Griggs Group Limited, was acquired by Premira, a private equity company. Now I've had probably half a dozen Doc Martens in my time. The first ones I ever got were the really low shoe type ones. They were interesting though because they had a steel toe and I bought them because I was, this is how old this is, I was trying to get a job at a record store and you couldn't wear sneakers. So I said, all right, I can't wear sneakers. I'm going to go find a badass boot that's like a shoe, but it's still a boot. And uh, so that was what I bought. And I wore those for a long, long time. I ended up, I, I think I ended up selling them for like 15 bucks, buying another pair. And come to think of it, I never really even knew what my exact shoe size was. I was buying things either on sale or I could find them at thrift stores, whatever, whatever I could afford at the time. Um, I remember I had a pair of the cherry red ones. I think they had like a skull emblazoned on them. I mean, you know, these were the, the, the boots that I would wear to like metal shows and hardcore shows here in the Northeast back when that was a really big thing. So that was how I knew and loved them. And in my opinion, I mean, a good 1460 boot should be in any well-rounded collection. Now, here's the thing. This is, it, it began as a work boot. So you can get a model to work in. 
Would they be my ch- my first choice for the job site? Probably not. They are comfortable. Um, that airwear sole is really nice. But as far as work boots go, you want to make sure that you get something that has all of the safety concerns taken care of. The good thing is, though, the big thing that the airwear sole is built around is the oil and fat and acid resistance. It was meant as workwear. So you you can you can wear these to work. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. You can wear them to work. However, for a really hard job site, they wouldn't be my first choice. Now, the model that I want to talk about is my most recent one. I bought this for this review. This is the 1460 Abandon. And the reason I got this one is because it's a little bit different than your traditional cherry or black. And I've had those in the past. I want something a little bit different. And this just struck my, it it caught my eye with that sort of tumbled leather. And it's very soft, very oily, um, just feel to it. Here's my feeling on these boots in a nutshell. If you're coming from the world of sneakers and you want to get into boots, but you're you're a little bit nervous about the really thick, um, heavy boots that I review a lot on this channel, these are an excellent gateway. So they feel like sneakers. When you put them on, they're, they're already pliable, they're soft, they're very bouncy in the sole, so they're nice and comfortable. These are absolutely some of the most comfortable boots that I've worn, especially out of the box. Even though I do prefer a made to measure, you know, you send in the tracing of your foot and then they make it that way. These though, being as soft as they are, feel more like a sneaker. So if you're coming from the world of sneakers and you want to get into boots, this is a great gateway. Now these are the made in England versions, So there are some differences between these and the Taiwanese or Chinese versions that you can buy for even less. I think it's worth the upcharge for the ones that are uh, made in England. I, I mean, staying true to their roots. That's kind of the whole soul of these boots. To get a Doc Martin that's made in China, unless you have no other choice and your uh, budget is limited, in which case get whatever you want. But if you have the option and you have the means, I would definitely go with the made in England version. You know, the thing about these is there's not a stitch out of place. There's not anything that's, you know, offensive about the design as far as a, a, a... just a design standpoint. They're classic Doc Martens with that yellow stitching. The cool thing about this model too is that they have the gold scripted uh, airwear bouncing soles pull tab in the back, which is kind of a neat little nod to the fact that it's the higher end and you know, you're actually getting something closer to what you could have bought back in the day. You know, I gotta say, I've really enjoyed wearing these boots. Now the thing that makes Docs Docs is this sole, that air wear sole. It's extremely comfortable. When you put these on, it's nice and squishy, nice and bouncy. That's why they're called bouncing soles. They're very comfortable. So the whole idea here is that there's this waffle pattern beneath the tread, or I should say above the tread, if you're looking at it this way, and that traps air when it's made. And that's what you're riding on is that cushion of air. It's very, very comfortable. So that's at the sole of all of these boots. This is actually a Goodyear welted boot, believe it or not. This yellow stitching, now there it is a PVC welt. This isn't a leather welt. The only leather you're going to find is on the upper here. Nothing underneath that. Uh, but it's a PVC welt, and, you know, that ridge sole, it just, it, it, it's, it's classic. You can recognize these things coming at you from across the room. There were docks, and there are docks available without that yellow stitching. If you don't want that look, I think the ones that were issued to police didn't have that. I think they had black stitching instead of the yellow. But the 1460 is just a legendary boot and something that you should really consider getting in your collection if you don't already have one or several because there are people who collect these things. Now, the one thing I really don't like about these boots is the laces. The laces feel a bit too dainty for what the boots are. These are supposed to be original old school work boots. Flat wax laces just they don't go with that vibe, in my opinion. So I'm going to replace them with these right here. And now these are just leftovers from my whites because I use the leather laces on those. But I think that the yellow will be a a nice, um, you know, nod to the yellow stitching around the welt. It'll look a lot better. It'll be more substantial. And it'll just feel, these feel like dress shoe laces. In my opinion, they should have gone with a heavier gauge. That's my own mileage. You may like them. And if you like them, hey, rock on. You know, to tell you the truth, when I got these in the mail, I was worried because I'm so used to these very substantial work boots, and that's what I prefer to wear all the time. So I was kind of worried that these boots that I used to love so much, just like an old album, when you listen to it, it just doesn't have the magic that it once did. I was worried about that. Opened them up, and, you know, they smelled nice. They felt nice. It's a very oily leather, this abandoned leather. It's very soft. 
I put them on and they, they fit great. They were comfortable out of the box. There was no break-in period because they are so soft. And I kind of felt like, you know, it was it was it was getting reacquainted with an old friend. It was a very nice experience. And I I wear these a ton. You know, a lot of times I'll buy these boots. I'll wear them for the review purposes. Some of the great ones I continue wearing, but a lot of them I just put aside and, and I find somebody else who needs them more than I do. These, though, I keep going back to. They're nice to throw on and, and not have to worry about anything breaking in or, you know, just being uncomfortable during the day. They feel great. For a $200-ish boot, there's a lot to love here. And especially with their legendary status and just being the boot that was accepted by so many people. So who are Doc Martens for, especially now? I think history has shown us that they can be embraced by any number of different types of people. So... The people who enjoyed them were originally the working class, people who had to work with their hands for a living. So could you use them in that scenario now? Yeah, you absolutely could. You have a slip-resistant, oil-resistant, uh, acid-resistant sole underneath your feet. There's no break-in period, so they're nice and comfortable. You could definitely wear these in a lot of working class, you know, blue-collar environments. No doubt about it. Now, that being said, they don't these this particular pair right here and a lot of the ones that you can get the made in England versions don't have the safety things that you're going to want on a job site or a place with a lot of uh, job site hazards. So if you need something with a composite toe or all those things that I mentioned earlier, you may want to look at one of the models that's meant for work or another brand which has more of the modern updated safety features in it. After all, Cool boots, are they mean nothing if you can't wear them because you got killed on the job site. So they could be used in blue-collar work. There's no doubt about it. Mostly, though, I think the person who's going to wear these is the person who enjoys their history and likes that, that retro vibe. These haven't changed a whole lot since they were made back in the 50s. So what you're wearing now is, is a throwback to those older times. I love that kind of thing. And it reminds me of my high school days and the way things were back then much simpler time and i enjoy that part of it too so there's the people who will wear it for its legendary status and there are also people who are going to appreciate this for those air cushion soles as i mentioned originally the people who bought these were women over 40 who liked that feeling and could really appreciate the extra cushion that it gave you so if you're coming from the world of sneakers or maybe you're somebody who's coming out of the workforce and you've worn work boots your entire life. You don't want to hang them up entirely, but you want something that's a little bit softer. After all, that's why they were invented, was to help somebody who was overcoming an injury. So if you're somebody who has worn things that have been really punishing on your knees and your ankles and your, your back for a long time, these would be a, a welcome change while also still having that boot silhouette, the look of a work boot. I think they're legendary. I think that there is a place for these in almost anybody's wardrobe. Some of the hardcore boot guys, they might disagree. I don't really care. I like them. That's all that matters to me. And I think that you might as well. So let me know. I know plenty of people have great Doc Martin stories. Please let me know them in the comment section. I think that's a wonderful place for us to talk and connect on this kind of thing. Please let me know your thoughts down there. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you next time.